Welcome back to the year 1982 as we continue our look at the Masters of the Universe toy line by Mattel. Previously, we looked at the Ocean Warlord Merman, one of Skeletor's evil henchmen. We also checked out He-Man's friend and mentor Man-at-Arms and learned that he is the foster father of Tila, the only female action figure released in Series 1. Of the original eight figures, only four remain, and today we'll be looking at the warrior goddess Tila. Here, on Creed's collection. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Creed's Collection. Today we are checking out the warrior goddess Tila from the 1982 Masters of the Universe toy line by Mattel. Tila has two different backstories depending on if you follow the original mini comics or the cartoon. In the mini comics, she was a clone of the original sorceress created by Skeletor to aid him in his evil doings, rescued by man-at-arms and raised to be good. If you follow the cartoon, she's the daughter of the sorceress and the foster daughter of man-at-arms, as well as captain of the Royal Guard of Eternia. In either version, she's a powerful warrior, but just between you and me, I'll always prefer the mini comic stories over the cartoon. And now that we know a little bit more about Tila, let's go ahead and take a closer look. First, I want to point out Tila's fantastic face sculpt and her snake headdress armor. This is the outfit she wore in the mini comics that predates the cartoon. I prefer this look a lot more because it's more in line with what the other Masters figures wore. They all had some type of armor that was removable. And Tila's is no exception, as you can see the tab right there on her back that allows you to pop off the headdress. The character model they used for the cartoon is pretty much identical to the figure, just without any of the armor attached. Which is such a shame because look at this thing, it looks incredible. The details on it are so awesome. Looks familiar though, almost like I've seen it in another toy line. Oh well. Now I'll take a look at Tila without her headdress on. This is the version most people remember. This is how she looked on the cartoon show. And I have to say that her head sculpt and hairstyle remind me of Disney's Cinderella. And as we pull back, you can see how much detail is covered by the headdress. It's actually kind of crazy. All the gold detail around the front of the bra, going up around the collar, the leafing that goes down into the shorts area. It's really nice and I'm surprised they chose to cover it up. I suspect it's why they took the armor off of her for the cartoon show, was to show off some of that detail. Now I'll take a look at Tila's articulation. Like all Masters figures, she has the rubber band legs. They're not very poseable, unfortunately. She does have the spring-loaded waist, as you can see there. We'll get to that in a second. Her arms can go up and down, and her head can move left and right. And that covers all of her articulation. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at that spring-loaded waist. Like all the Series 1 figures from Masters of the Universe, they have a spring-loaded power punch feature, which allows Tila to do a pretty wicked shield bash. And even though she can hold her own, knocking down the likes of Skeletor, being the first girl in the line definitely presented some unique problems. Hey Tila, that was amazing. You just really showed Skeletor. So, you want to go get a coffee or... Uh, uh, yeah, some other time. Uh, I tell ya, that Tila is beautiful. Oh my god, Mecha Neck, you're so embarrassing. What? Alright, now we're on to Tila's included accessories, like her snake staff. It's extremely flexible. You'd think it'd be hard plastic, but it's not. And I assume that maybe it was a safety issue to keep it soft like that. As we get closer in, you can see the head of the staff is a really, really well-sculpted cobra. Once again, reminding me of another toy line. Hmm. I'm going to put my finger on it before the review's over. Tila also has an included shield. It kind of reminds me of something from Greece, which is kind of funny because Eternia is another planet across the galaxy. And on the back here, you can see how you attach it to her arm. It's extremely easy. You just take it and snap it under her wrist. That's all there is to it. And here's a final look at her snake headdress, just to get a better idea of that detail. Like I said, this piece of armor, I think, just looks amazing. And of course, I've just been kidding the whole time. Obviously, it reminds me of the Cobra symbol from G.I. Joe. And since both these toy lines came out in 1982, I'm not sure if somebody ripped somebody off or if it's just an amazing coincidence. Tila's copyright information is located on the base of her neck. 1981, made in Taiwan. 
As I've stated previously in my Masters figure reviews, the first wave of Series 1 had soft heads and the second wave had hard heads. Tila is part of the second wave of Series 1 as she has a hard head. And now for our He-Man size comparison. Tila looks like she's just a little bit taller than He-Man, which I didn't expect. And I guess that means she stands over 6 feet tall, making her a very intimidating warrior goddess. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my toy review for Tila from the 1982 toy line Masters of the Universe by Mattel. Along with Princess Leia, Tila helped pave the way for awesome action figures to be made out of excellent female characters like the Baroness and Chitara. Not to mention Evil Lynn and of course, the Sorceress. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts, please leave a comment. I love reading and responding to them. And while you're at it, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it and it would help my channel grow. I review a toy from my vintage collection every Wednesday. So hope to see you next week and every week after, here on Creed's Collection.